Welcome back, folks. This is our first Slipknot lesson. We're going to dive straight in. So um, in terms of what I'm using, no pedals. That's right, no pedals. Just this bad boy, which is the Seth Bacchus Shoreline uh, T standard. And yes, that's right. Telecaster bridge into that little bad boy back there. That is the orange Jim Root Terra signature amp number four, uh, which I think is discontinued, but I picked it up secondhand on eBay for about 300 quid. It is rad. <laughs> And I'm amazed at the combination of this guitar. It's got bare knuckle uh, pickups in it, which are these type, I forget what they're called. Um, and that amp get you into that territory. Now bear in mind, we are in a, a drop tuning. So this guitar is in standard tuning with the low E or six string down two frets to D. So it'll match the fourth string. And then I'm using the drop pedal to go down a further three semitones or three frets or a tone and a half, however you want to cut that. So for the intro, I would not go for... I would cut back a bit on the volume on the guitar and play right by the bridge and you get that nice you get that nice tone right so the intro part is just that And then both guitars come in. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, he only ever plays that at the beginning. It goes straight to the third fret for the chorus part. So it's a subtle variation. Easiest way to think about this phrase is um, three lots of four open. Then this. Zero, one, two, three, right? Then you're on the third fret for another seven. Sixth fret, slide down to the first, but it's, it hangs over for an extra eighth note. Then four here. Then three, one, zero. And then back around. Then when both guitar parts come in, this guitar part changes. And you, like I say, you don't do that chromatic run. It goes like this. And there's another little slide at the end, okay? Now while that guitar part's playing Jim Root's part, basically does something totally different. And I don't hear it on the album. But he, I saw a video that he was explaining his parts and uh, he's doing this. So I don't know if he just does this live now or what, or if it's just hidden in the mix. But here it is. It goes like this. Like that. He goes around that twice. So you've got five, seven, nine. But flatten your first finger there because you're going to need to play... Right, while you're holding this shape. So the melody is. And then. All right, so that part. into the most awesomest part ever goes like this oh that was not bad actually i usually miss those so don't worry if you can't get it the first time they're tricky um at least i find them tricky anyway and you've really got to i mean that's how i'm holding my pick if you can see that there's not a lot of the end of the pick there and I'm leaving quite a bit of my thumb to overhang and also I'm amazed this is a single coil I'm amazed that I'm getting such good stuff happening there so that part slowly is just this rhythm bat 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 okay and you, you're not palm muting 
<laughs> but you're going to be using your um, left hand to mute the strings in between each each um, note, right? <laughs> And here, you do some palm muting on the one and the zero. And Jim, he plays that with his, the, the third fret on the low E, or six string, right? Whatever it is, tuned to now, with his third finger. And he uses his little finger to get the third fret artificial harmonic, right? Which you bend up to a full set. <laughs> Okay, and then again. But this time, you go up to the sixth fret, and then you play an artificial harmonic on the third fret on the, um, the sixth string. Okay, so like this. And give it a bit of vibrato as well. Quite tricky to do that, so um, I find it tricky anyway. Then you're into the verse part, which is quite quick picking. Jim's part's all palm muted, so you're going to play. I think the trickiest part is getting from the 12th fret on the 5th string to the 7th fret on the 6th string, okay? So you're going to play. That's the first part, okay? So let me slow that down. Four on the 12th fret, two on the seven, four on the 10. So that is. All right, then you go down to the third fret. Okay, four on the three, two on the six, four on the one, six on the zero. Okay, so just practice that until you get it. Then the other guitar part comes in with this. It's not palm muted as well. It plays. Plays that round and round. And again, that is tricky. It's, it's a lot of um, alternate picking, so it's a bit of a workout. So you've got um, three on the 12th and the 7th fret. Four on the 8th and the nine. And two on the seven there. Then you've got three on the eight and the ten. And then four on the eight, six on the seven. So slowly. That's awesome. But then you get into this part, which is um, just before the chorus. Into the into the chorus is such a brilliant riff. It's essentially the same thing played three times, all palm muted. That's the riff that you repeat three times. Then down to the second, down to the first, and then you're into the the main chorus, right? So slowly. go to the chorus part which we've already done as part of the intro then transitioning from the chorus into the verse you play the verse riff with this little fill you got that in there right so it's just three five one zero with that rhythm round the verse again then back into the chorus this time around though you play the chorus four times and um, in the video that I saw Jim Root talking about his parts, he chucks in a couple of extra like fills that I don't even hear on the, the album version. So I don't know if he does that live or again, if they're really quiet in the mix, but let's learn those. So the first time, um, the other guitar is just playing. Four times. But the first time Jim plays this. That's the first riff, right? A couple of octaves, you got fifth fret, eighth fret, and the tenth fret, all on the uh, fifth string. And 
then you're into that second half of the riff. The second fill is a little bit trickier, but it's really nice. It goes like this. Three, four. Which is pretty rad, isn't it? So you can start on the fifth fret up to the eighth. Then you've got a grace note slide from the tenth to the twelfth. Like that, right? Then down to the fifth fret for two. And then he does this twice, and this you hear really clearly on the album, which is this three, four, one. Super lovely. So let me play it slowly for you and watch my picking hand because there's lots of slides. Then there's like a middle eight part. that little fill at the end so all I did there was play around the um, that main part uh, one and a half times really well the last bar actually you substitute out with there's some palm muted triplets there right on the sixth fret and the third fret and then you go to the first fret right everything else is the same so you're still playing you don't shift that up one fret, it's all on, you know, where it was before. Essentially, you're just substituting the open fifth and sixth string with the first fret. And there you play one, three, one, six, zero. Another extended fill before you go back into the last chorus, which is... Then you have this. Which is really tricky. I find that tricky anyway, so let me try and play at speed. So slowly that is zero, three, one, five, each of those played three times, then two on the three, two on the seven. Make sure you get there with your first finger because then you need to go to the 12th fret and back to the 7th, three times each. Again, three on the 10 and the 9 and then two on the 5, one on the 7. Back into the chorus and then you got this as the outro part. So you're just basically replacing 8th notes with 16th notes. I'm not sure if it's palm muted. I don't think it is. So just play it quite close to the bridge, I would. And then try and get that 3rd fret to ring out if you can. Don't worry if you can't. You can hear I miss it loads of times. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed that one. See you again soon.